My name is Tracy Clare. I'm an occupational therapist on the surgical system here at Markham Stouffville Hospital. In this video, I will be focusing on a few areas to help you prepare for your upcoming surgery. My goal is to help make your transition home as smooth as possible. I will be reviewing some strategies or ideas you can start thinking about to help you prepare your home when you are discharged. Planning should start before your scheduled surgery. I will also be talking about activities of daily living. This includes some of our day-to-day -day activities, such as getting dressed. I will review some strategies and equipment that may assist you in independently managing these tasks in the early days following your surgery. Finally, I will be discussing when you can return to driving. First of all, I want to stress the importance of planning ahead. Taking the time to talk to your supports and discuss your needs when you return home will help make the transition home smoother. It is important to have these conversations with your supports, those in your home or outside of your home. Think about your needs and establish a plan before your surgery. This plan should be something that both you and your support system agree upon. Consider transportation, meals, groceries, housekeeping. Ask yourself who is going to do what? How are things going to look when I first get home? Do you have someone who can stay with you for the first days after discharge to ease in your transition home? If you need to arrange private supports, it is best to coordinate this before your surgery. In addition, you will require a two-wheeled walker when you return home. If you are not used to using a walker, it is helpful to consider how your home is currently set up to ensure you have adequate space to use the walker and you have reduced the risk of tripping or falls within the home. You may wish to consider removing a tripping hazard such as loose rugs, loose wires, excessive clutter, or furniture positioned too close together. Ensure you have adequate walk space for the walker. Place frequently used items within easy reach. Avoid excessive bending or reaching. Ensure good lighting. Inadequate lighting can be a common cause of falls. If you have light bulbs that are burnt out or an aspect of your home is in need of repair, Please take care of this prior to the surgery. This is not something you want to be dealing with afterwards. Consider preparing frozen meals ahead of time. It is really nice to have options in your freezer to warm up, especially during the first few days you are at home. So the better prepared you are leading up to the surgery, the smoother the transition will be going home. If you are having hip surgery, you may or may not have restrictions on how you move your hip following the surgery. Your surgeon will discuss these with you. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to the orthopedic navigator for clarification. Regardless, there are some strategies that help make getting dressed after your surgery easier. As with any surgery, pain, swelling, and stiffness are common and in some cases can affect your ability to reach your feet or place pants over your feet. It is possible many of you are already using some of these strategies because you are already having difficulties. If you are having knee surgery, important thing to remember that when it comes to getting dressed immediately after your surgery, no two people will have the same experience. Pain, swelling, and stiffness can all affect how easy or difficult it is for you to get dressed. Here are some strategies that may help getting dressed after your surgery easier. It is possible many of you are already using some or all of these strategies. If you do experience some difficulty, it is typically short term. So first of all, always remember to dress your surgical leg first. This is by far the easiest method to getting dressed. Consider wearing loose fitting pants or shorts with elastic waists. Consider loose fitting socks with a higher cotton content. They are easier to put on and less restrictive, especially if you have swelling into your feet after the surgery. Sit to get dressed when possible. Only stand to pull up your pants. This is safer, easier, and will conserve energy. You can ask for help if you need it. If you do need help, it is likely very short term. Always consider your footwear. Please wear supportive non-slip shoes. Avoid open-toed slippers. Make sure your shoes fit properly. In the event you are still having any difficulties managing getting dressed, there are a few options on the market. These are called adaptive equipment, otherwise known as dressing aids. 
First one I wanted to show you is called a long-handled reacher. This is an extremely useful tool. What it does is it gives you a longer arm. You can see if I squeeze this end, fingers on the other end will allow me to pick things up the ground. So if I was to say drop something onto the ground, such as my sock, I could use this to bend down, pick it up and bring it up without having to bend forward. Very, very useful. The other thing that this is very useful for that many people don't think about is putting on your pants. As I mentioned earlier, in many cases, getting your pants over your feet can be very difficult. So here's another strategy. Always remember we are dressing your surgical leg first. So what you're going to do is take your pants, grab onto the rim of your pants. You're going to lower it to the ground. You are going to take your leg of the surgical leg and you're going to slide it into your pant leg. You're going to bring it up until you can grab it comfortably. Once you can do that, you can let go of the reacher. Right? Works extremely well Often it is a very short term need for getting dressed. However, in the early stages, it is very beneficial. So that is a reacher. Next device I wanted to show you is called a sock aid. The sock aid is just as it sounds. It is designed to help you put your sock on. The sock aid is contoured. The curved side will always face towards the ceiling. What you're going to do is you're going to take your sock you're going to put it on just as you would put it on your foot. Bring it all the way to the end. And that saves you having to do this later. What you're going to do is you're going to hold on to straps. You're going to lower it to the ground. You're going to take your foot and you're going to wiggle your toes all the way to the end. Once your toes are at the end, you're going to pull on the string. As you do that, the sock is now on your foot. Very, very useful. As everyone knows, socks are generally one of the hardest things to put on. Very useful if you live alone or you would like to be able to do this independently and you are struggling. This is called a sock aid. Lastly, I just want to show you a long handle shoehorn. It's like any other shoehorn, except it is longer. It allows you to easily put on your shoes without having to bend forward. They do come in different lengths. Standard length is about 18 inches. They also do make a standing shoehorn. Whichever you prefer is fine. The next area I want to talk about is bathroom equipment. All of the equipment I will discuss is optional. It is based on your needs, abilities, and any surgical recommendations. Equipment is intended to increase safety and ease of function. I highly recommend you pay attention to your current bathroom setup and consider how high or low your toilet is at present, as well as space availability for equipment. If your toilet is lower or you are already struggling with your current toilet height, there are options available to raise the overall height, such as a raised toilet seat with or without arms or a stationary commode over the toilet. It is important to ensure you are not making the toilet too high so that you do not have proper foot placement on the ground. If you do not feel the overall height needs to be raised, but having arms to push up or lower yourself would be helpful, a toilet safety frame is an option. This equipment is not permanent and will not damage your toilet. This device offers similar support to the arms on a chair. Many people are wondering when they can return to showering. It is important not to get your incision wet until the staples are removed, which is around 12 to 14 days after your surgery. Getting moisture in the incision increases your risk of an infection and can compromise the wound healing. Sponge bathing is the safest option. However, if you wish to shower, ensure you keep the incision dry with either an Aquaseal dressing or wrapping the incision site with a waterproof material. If you do shower, Bath equipment is available to increase ease and safety. As mentioned earlier, sitting for showering is safer, easier, and will conserve energy. A bath chair or stool can fit into the shower stall or a tub shower setup. It is adjustable in height and has a rubber on the bottom to prevent sliding. A tub transfer bench is also available and is designed specifically for the tub. 
Again, it is important to consider space availability and fit with any equipment purchase or rental to ensure safety. Grab bars are another option to further increase safety in showering or around your toilet. These devices are installed on the wall, therefore it is important that they are installed by someone who knows what they are doing. They must be installed into the stud of a wall or with special anchors. Grab bars are useful to provide increased stability and safety when stepping in and out of the shower or getting up and down from a toilet. Wedge cushions are designed to ensure your hip angle is positioned greater than 90 degrees. This is important if you have surgical restrictions in place. Wedge cushions are not mandatory. The cushion is placed on any surface except the bed or shower and by its design will keep the knee slightly lower than the hip in a seated position. It is made of foam and has a board on the bottom. The board is recommended to provide stability and help prevent hammocking. This wedge cushion comes in two different sizes, a four by two, which means four inches at the back of the cushion, two inches at the front. This is intended for those individuals who are five foot five, five foot six, or taller. There is also a three by one cushion. Again, three inches at the back of the cushion, one inch at the front. These cushions are intended for individuals who are five foot five and under. It is important to make sure the higher surface is always at the back of the chair and the lower part is positioned at the front. If you are purchasing a wedge cushion, it is recommended to trial sitting on the cushion in the store to ensure it is a proper fit. All the bathroom equipment I have talked about can be rented, purchased, or borrowed. The wedge cushion and reacher, socket, and shoehorn cannot be rented and must be purchased unless you have a friend or family member that can loan you these items. Some extended healthcare plans may cover the cost. It is recommended you contact your provider to see what they may cover and what required documentation they require to support funding. A vendor list is available to assist you in locating equipment. This vendor list is available on the website or in the description below. It is not inclusive. Feel free to visit any vendor of your choice. Some home and hardware stores may also carry this equipment. However, it is recommended you contact a medical supply store if you require assistance or would like further information on the products you are purchasing. Last of all, I want to talk about returning to driving. Typically, driving will be restricted for approximately six weeks if you are having surgery on the right side, as this is your primary driving leg, unless of course you drive a standard vehicle. This time frame will vary depending on your recovery and your specific surgery. Your return to driving depends on individual progress. You require adequate strength, range of motion, and reflexes to safely operate a motor vehicle and to respond appropriately to any emergency situation. It is also important to consider any pain medication you are taking and the impact that this may have on your thinking. It is very important to talk to your surgeon or your family physician about returning to driving to ensure you are safe to do so. Do not drive until you have received clearance to drive. If you have no one to drive you to appointments during this time period, accessible public transportation does exist. These services are region specific and all of these programs do require completion of an application. The application also requires a healthcare provider such as a physiotherapist, occupational therapist or physician complete a section of the application prior to approval to ensure you do meet their eligibility criteria. It is recommended you initiate this process before your surgery as it can take a few weeks for the approval to be completed. The cost to use this is the same as accessing any public transportation. As well, if you do not have an accessible parking permit, it is recommended you consider this application. It is free of charge and is assigned to the person, not the vehicle. Even if you do not drive, you are still eligible for this service. The application can be picked up at any service Ontario or it can be printed online. It also requires completion by a healthcare provider prior to approval. Once the application is complete, you can take it to any service Ontario and you will receive a temporary permit. 
This will allow you to park in a closer parking space for typically three to four months following your surgery. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the orthopedic navigator and she will direct your questions to the most appropriate team member. An occupational therapist is available on the unit following your surgery to assist with any questions or concerns you may have regarding activities of daily living, home equipment, or your safety upon return home.